we go back to the Hollywood glamour of the decade from 1930 to 1940, we see in this clip by Eisenberg again a perfect example of Hollywood glamour and American style with its exaggerations, with this opulence, with that daring that is typical of America. If we look instead to this uh, clip made in France in the same period that the one by Eisenberg we just saw, we see two different ways of conceiving fashion jewelry. This is much more deceiving. It tends to show something that easily could be confused with fine jewelry in white gold or platinum, diamonds and rock crystal. So, even in, in such a small field as fashion jewelry, if you are careful enough and able to read, you see the difference between one culture of a country and another culture of another country. So here we have the two different concepts of lifestyle. America, France. If we think that this is a piece of 1925 up to 1930 approximately, made in Germany, we also have to think of what was in fashion at the time for regular uh, women. It was the white jewelry in platinum and diamonds and I think it's uh, very amusing and really uh, surprising that some lady of the jet set could go out with such a necklace. Probably she was a customer of Schiaparelli and her surrealistic pieces of jewelry, but in any case it's an extraordinary example of what was called up to, as I said, about 20 years ago, jam jewelry. If we take this necklace by Chanel 1930, Again, we see a wonderful example in reality of one of her cradles that was a really elegant woman always wears fine jewelry together with fashion jewelry. As long as the fashion jewelry is made of extraordinary good quality, poor material, very well assembled and, and handworked and combined with taste and elegance. If we think of Italy in the 30s, poor under fascism, only being able to use Italian uh, material, we see that again this is a wonderful 1930 piece of fashion jewelry done with poor material but with great taste and great uh, creative innovation. <laughs>